The House January 6th committee jump-starting its public hearings with a bang this week after two months of gathering more evidence. Now, NBC News has confirmed a Washington Post report that the committee plans to show brand new clips from Danish documentary filmmakers who filmed Roger Stone during the weeks leading up to the violence in the Capitol. Now, this is separate from all those other documentaries you may have heard about in the past. This documentary is aptly named A Storm Foretold, and the clips are even more shocking than you'd expect. Excellent. <laughs> the, vi <laughs> the violence. <laughs> the voting. Let's get right Let's get to right the to violence. It. Let's get right to it. Shoot to kill. See an see in Antifa? Shoot to kill. Yeah, them. Done with this bull. I think he made his point loud and clear. January 6th was not a spontaneous riot, y'all. Remember. Roger Stone is not only some far-right fringe figure, he is a longtime friend of former President Trump and, at one point, was even an advisor to the 2016 campaign. Not to mention that Donald Trump saved Roger Stone from going to prison for lying to Congress by pardoning him. In other insurrection investigation news, we are learning that senior leadership at the Secret Service confiscated the cell phones of 24 agents who were involved in the agency's response to January 6th. Remember the interest in Secret Service text messages? It all began after former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson told the select committee that the former president lunged at an agent when he refused to drive Trump's car toward the Capitol during the insurrection. That's a claim former President Trump has denied. Plus, we've got a brand new Monmouth poll out today, and it's showing about four in ten Americans feel the former president is responsible for the January 6th violence. And while a majority of the public wants to resume the public hearings, most actually prefer to see the investigation wrap up soon. I think I am in that category. Joining me now is Glenn Kirshner, a former federal prosecutor and an MSNBC legal analyst. Okay, now, Glenn, uh, how absurd is it that Roger Stone was literally just walking around with the protection of these paramilitary groups like uh, Oath Keepers? Yeah, Simone, against the backdrop of him being sentenced to 40 months in prison, and three days before he was to report to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, Donald Trump commuted his sentence and ultimately pardoned him, right? So he got away with a significant batch of federal felonies. And there we see him urging violence, inciting violence, inspiring violence. And I'll tell you, you know, look, there's no justice if there's not equal justice. Mm -hmm. And what we have right now is the boots of the insurrection, the people that were told by Donald Trump Rudy Giuliani, Mo Brooks, and others, to go to the Capitol, fight like hell or you won't have a country anymore. Now go down there and stop the certification of Joe Biden's win. Helpfully, Donald Trump used the word steal, mm -hmm. which is great. Why? Because it provides prosecutors with evidence of his corrupt intent. Because really? he knew it wasn't So steal is steal. significant here. Beautiful word. Prosecutors embrace it. Because all of his high government officials, his own appointees, told him it wasn't stolen. He used that lie as a platform to order the attack on the Capitol. Here is the deep injustice. The boots of the insurrection, not three blocks away. I was in federal court this morning watching jury selection in the Oath Keepers case. They're being indicted, they're being tried, convicted, and imprisoned. And the suits of the insurrection, the command structure, the hierarchy, not one minute of accountability has visited them. That's a deep injustice at play in America right now. What are you, um, jury selection did start today. What are you watching for in that case? So, you know, jury selection is going to be a challenge because mm -hmm. everybody has heard something about the insurrection and most people have strong feelings about it. Here's the thing. It's a little bit of a fiction. Do they have to, I'm sorry, Glenn, do, do they have to find a juror that has no feeling about the insurrection whatsoever? Is that the criteria? Perfect question. Because it's not that we want people who are blank slates, because that would tell mm -hmm. us something about a juror who knew nothing about the insurrection. We want jurors who, who can say, I heard about it, I have strong feelings about it, but judge under oath, I can swear that I will put it aside and I will base this case, I will base my jury verdict in this case only on the evidence I see introduced during the course of the trial. That's the kind of juror we're looking for. Okay, okay, we'll be watching that. I want to play another piece of sound, uh, Glenn, for you from this documentary. Take a listen to this. So that's the concept. Has it been pitched to the president? Yes, it has. I believe the president's for it. The obstacles are these, uh, are these lily-livered, uh, weak-kneed, uh, bureaucrats in the White House Counsel's office, and now they must be 
crushed because they've told the president something that's not true. Okay, Glenn, it sounds to me as though Roger Stone is saying the former president was on board with this idea of this interact of, of insurrection, stopping the steal, whatever, the whole time. What impact could these comments have, if any, on the January 6th investigations, plural, happening, specifically the Department of Justice's investigation and the investigation in Fulton County? You know, it's like Roger Stone is begging for an orange jumpsuit. What I want to see, hopefully, from the next, perhaps the last, public J6 committee hearing is some of the connective tissue mm. between the boots, the people who were ordered to attack the Capitol and obey Donald Trump's order, the folks in the Willard War Room who were apparently communicating with the Mark Meadows of the world, and then right into the Oval Office itself. And it looks like Roger Stone may be one of the people who can provide that connective tissue. I hope we're going to start to hear more about that. Okay, they, they're, they're teasing that this is the key part of the next January 6th hearing, so we will all definitely be watching. There's another um, thing we finally got some kind of answers on. The Secret Service text messages. Everyone remembers Secret Service said uh, they didn't have the text messages. Inspector General couldn't find it. We now know that the January 6th committee has uh, the cell phones of at least 24 um, and messages, 24 Secret Service agents. What do you think the significance of that development is, and what do you think folks will find? Yeah, first of all, better late than never. Yes, I'm yes. glad that the J6 committee got a hold of these cell phones. And, you know, I know we live in a post-irony world, it seems, but this always felt ironic to me. When I was a prosecutor handling cases right up the street at the U.S. Attorney's Office, anytime we seized cell phones, for example, mm -hmm. particularly if we thought the target of the investigation had deleted information off of his cell phone, you know where we went? We didn't go down to the forensic lab at Quantico, the FBI lab. We went to the U.S. Secret Service mm -hmm. Forensic mm -hmm. Sciences mm -hmm. Division because that's the premier organization to, among other things, retrieve deleted information off of electronic mm. devices. So, come on now, Secret Service. I wasn't buying in the first instance that, oh, well, we just you, migrated our phones. I wasn't buying phones. it either. I wasn't buying it either. Innocent migration of our phone systems. I don't believe it. Not at all. Okay. We ha also have some exclusive reporting from NBC News, Glenn. Members of the Oath Keepers charge. We talked about the fact jury selection happening. Folks were texting with Rudy Giuliani, members of the Oath Keepers, texting with Rudy Giuliani, the son, pardon me, not Andrew, pardon me, Andrew Giuliani, not Rudy, but people have always texted with Rudy Giuliani, let's be honest. They were texting with Andrew Giuliani, and we're hearing more and more reports about the coordination between rioters and people tangentially involved um, with Trump, with the White House. What do you think this means? Is it, I think Andrew Giuliani is very significant here. Yeah. I don't think we can count our evidentiary chickens before they hatch. Mm -hmm. We need okay. to. Listen, okay. anytime I would get my hands on what we called call detail, detail records, all that meant is I could prove, based on the uh, communications, that cell phone A was communicating with cell phone B. But we need to put some evidentiary meat on the bones. We need to get one or both of the parties to, you know, go under oath and say, this is who I was talking to, this is what we were talking about, and here's why it has evidentiary value. So I think we have to wait and see more. All right, wait and see. See, Glenn Kirshner, I'm just, this is why you come to break it down, because the man with the plan who knows. Glenn Kirshner, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you.